Boom. Titan by Ron Chernow. Yo, get this book. It's a good book. I love the book. Uh, it is well worth the read. Is it an amazing book? Is it the greatest book? That doesn't matter. What matters is, is it worth reading? And it is. So uh, I love to read authors, especially titans, because I want to know how they lived, how they viewed the world. They say life is 80, 90% mental. So I want to know mentally how he processed the world and saw things because he was wealthy. He's rich. He's a titan. Um, so here are my takeaways. I have 10 takeaways from the book. One is he wanted to live to be 100. Uh, so he really took care of himself. He, he exercised. He really exercised outdoors. You know, they had no 24-hour fitness back then. So he exercised outdoors. Uh, horseback riding, golf. He really loved golf, especially as he got older and couldn't get on a horse anymore. And that, that's, in, that's inspiring to me that someone with all of his wealth wanted to live so long. And, and the reason why I'm inspired by that is we have this picture that's painted of people who are rich and unhappy and depressed. And he was the guy who really had a lust for life. Uh, he would even pick up hitchhikers. That's how much he loved life. He picked up hitchhikers just to talk to him. And he was in his 80s when he did this. Imagine, and would you, I, I'm 44 and there's no way I'd pick up a hitchhiker. So he, he really had a, a zest for life. Um, he also, another takeaway was he had, he had, he was big on daily routines and taking a nap. Um, he, can, he attributed that to his longevity and his health. I mean, he was sick a lot of times, but everybody was sick back then. Everybody caught everything. Uh, they ain't had no spirulina back in the day. But, you know, he lived to be 97 and he was big on taking naps and not only big on taking naps, number three, he loved to work at a leisurely pace. He eschewed hustling. Eschewed? Eschew? I don't know how to say it. Um, he was like, I don't understand hustling. That's too much. He believed in working at a leisurely pace, having his daily routine. Um, and you would think that a guy who made so much money and had such an impact on the world and business uh, was just frantically doing things at all hours. And and that's and even though that was his mentality, he may in some ways um, have been on a treadmill, you know, uh, so to speak, in, in terms of work. But his his mentality was he loved naps and he loved working at a leisurely pace and he loved uh, you know being home for dinner, that kind of thing. Um, so it, it wasn't uh, you know all office for this guy, which I was surprised by. I really thought. He was a guy who would be 24 seven and uh, at work, but he wasn't. Um, what I also loved is that he closed his eyes. This is number four. He closed his eyes when he listened to people. And I do that too. Um, and I always thought I, it was strange and weird that I did that. But I realized like I can take in information better um, and hear the context of what someone's really saying or what they really need like when my girlfriend's like, mur, 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 I just close my eyes and, I'll, and I, I take it in. Uh, she's going to be mad at me for making fun of her saying she's like, mur, mur, mur. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, that's number four. Number five, he, uh, he tied his companies to uh, a religious imagery because he was a man of faith. He went to church every Sunday. He donated to churches throughout his entire life. He was all about church. He's he was almost like the mafia, you know, like when you watch those old mafia movies, and they go uh, in the in the in the in the mafia. The main mafia guy is always in church on Sundays with his Hail Mary, you know, Mother, Father, Son, Holy, whatever the thing is, whatever that Trinity, Tupac, Biggie, Jay Z. Well, I don't know what the Trinity is. Um, but uh, so he was in church every Sunday. He loved God. So he would always say he always believed that God was an ally to, to his success. And if someone didn't believe in his ideas, he'd be like, you lack faith, my child. Uh, I don't know if he said it like that, but uh, that was uh, uh, part of his success is that he believed in high volume, 
low prices. He wanted to dominate 85% of the market. Uh, he didn't want 100% because he thought that would make him look greedy. Uh, but he said 85% uh, of the market was all he wanted. Uh, what else? His father was a, a like kind of a snake oil salesman. So he, he had it in the genes. You know, he, he, he saw his father, heard his father selling stuff off the back of trucks and claiming to be a doctor and et cetera, et cetera. Um, and, and, and his doctor was so shady and so well known for his shadiness that he, he tried to separate his name from his father's name uh, because it was embarrassing that his father was out in the streets uh, selling snake oil for everything. Hey, get your snake oil for your, for your back pain, for your cancer, infidelity, get your snake oil. Uh, he also, uh, what else is there? Number seven, he preferred we over I. I like that. He was always thinking about the company like, well, we here at blah, blah, blah. He wasn't self-absorbed. He was, uh, he was revolutionary at work, but, uh, but what was it? But domestic at home, I forget how they, how they described it, but you know, he, he liked to, you know, he did crazy things business-wise, but at home, he was just a regular father. Uh, he had a uh, few kids. Uh, and they really didn't have his business acumen. You would think that they, they would have, you know, been able to really grow and scale what he did, but none of them, you know, they all missed him. He was at, he was working all the time. And so they were kind of lost in, in, you know, just working and uh, doing, I don't know. They, they I mean, tr they're well off, but they really, did, they didn't take the baton and then keep going. They kind of leveled out or, uh, and if they're watching this, they're, they're probably. Um, two other things, I, I've lost count some here. Uh, he said, you can push and abuse me as long as I have my way. I like that mentality. He didn't care what you said about him. He didn't care if you attacked his character. As long as you let him get, the, as long as you sign a contract and you give him the deal that he wants, as long as you give him 85%, you could call him whatever you want to. That's the cost of it. That's the price of his soul. 85%. Give me 85%. Um, and then the last thing, and I love this, is that he hired skilled people as he found them, not as he needed them. Meaning if he met someone and, and they were brilliant, you know, uh, he would hire them. Even if he didn't know what to do with them or where to put them or what position to give them, he, he, he believed that they would make themselves of value. They would find a place for themselves within his company. So he hired people as he found them, uh, not as he needed them, which I think is a, is a great uh, way to, to view the world. And uh, I think that, that those were all the, uh, oh, and last one, and, and this changed, this really changed my number 10, I, I think. Um, he said, uh, save money when you can, not when you need to. And, uh, and I, I'm really bad with money, which is another reason why I read the book. I'm, I'm not great with finances or not skilled. It's not a habit of uh, saving money. So he said, save. And he said, borrow money when you can scale. So he, uh, he also believed in borrowing money before you needed to borrow money. So a lot of you out there who are like, should I collect unemployment or not? Should I get that loan or not? Get that money. Get the money while you can get the money because that allows you to get more money. So the more money you can get, whether it's free, whether you need it or not, get the money. You don't have to spend it. He's not saying spend it, but get the money that's available, put it off to the side, and then it allows you to build more money and then uh, you'll be able to you know, start living off the profit. So. I hope you enjoyed this uh, book review slash takeaway of uh, Titan, Ron Chernow. Uh, and I, I love to read Chernow's books because he, uh, he uses these big words. He always improves my vocabulary, even though I never looked the words up. But they're words like ineffable, laconic, uh, solipsism, uh, assiduously. You know what assiduously means? You do? Okay. Uh, avarice and uh, lugubrious. That's my favorite word. I have, don't ask me what that means. Go look it up. Lugubrious. It probably means look it up. I don't know. 
Uh, and then he also, Ron Chernow, also like his, his use of words are beautiful, masterfully put together. Uh, he says stuff like, uh, I forget who he was referring to, but he said, he's a mastodon of mental machinery. What? Let me say that again, a mastodon. Just, just a master, like who says mastodon, first of all, of mental machinery, what? And then um, he was talking about this guy who was just evil and he goes, uh, uh, he goes, he looked like a cherub next to him. And I was like, a cherub, that's hilarious, you know? Uh, just a little cute little fat baby with wings. And he, he's like, they were, two guys were so evil, but one was so much more evil that the lesser evil guy looked like a cherub. Uh, so he, he has uh, uh, he has well-crafted uh, sentences and phrases that keep you engaged uh, throughout the book. Uh, so get the book, check it out. Hope you enjoyed the review, like, subscribe. I'll try to be more consistent with these book reviews. I have like, I think 10 or 15 other book reviews up. And uh, if not, go check out my podcast. I have a podcast called Before You Kill Yourself. It's a suicide prevention podcast uh but if, even if you're not considering uh considering suicide that it's almost like uh because <laughs> use the word considering is it, almost like uh like a like a nomination are you considering uh anyway um uh it, it's a mental health is really about like how to thrive how to live to a hundred we talk about sex finances um, you know, mental health, all those things. So, uh, talk to you soon. Peace.